Welcome to the fourth section of the Creating Grant Application Components module. In this section, we'll be talking about the resumes or the biographical sketches that you'll be using for your staff in order to complete your grant application. The types of information that we've been talking about in this section are many items that you're often able to address in advance of sitting down to write an application. These are things that can take the pressure off that can relieve some of the stress that might come with grant applications. When we think about what a resume might look like or a biographical sketch, one of the most stressful things to hear as the grant writer or the grant professional when you're pulling an application together is to make the request of staff or to reach out to HR and say, well, these are the resumes that we need or these are the bio sketches that we need. And to have someone go, oh, uh, I don't think I've updated it since I started working here. Fill in the blank for how many years ago that was. So if you can have your colleagues, have your staff that might be part of your grant application uh, budgets, that might be a key part of your work plan or logic model, if you can have those resumes or those bio sketches updated in advance, wow, will that take some of the pressure off. Certainly, you might occasionally find instances where a grant maker has very specific requirements in terms of formatting or labeling as it relates to resumes and bio sketches, but better and easier, faster for you and your colleagues to do updating from a current document than if you have to do both formatting and the main meat of the document. As we think about who might have to submit a resume, so the preparation that you can do, well, we don't know who those future staff will be, so we can only focus on our current staff. What we want to think about are who are the staff in our organizational chart that are likely to be part of grant budgets? Who are those that are doing the key work that is getting called out in logic models and work plans as key activities? The individuals, the titles that are the responsible parties, are the responsible staff in those documents, those are the individuals that you should focus your effort on as it relates to the resume or the biographical sketch. When we think about formatting for resumes, there are a lot of different options. And so from your colleagues, they might all look just a little bit different. That is actually, that's okay. As I mentioned, if we can have the meat of the document updated and current to reflect their current role, their current title, their current type of work, that is the biggest hurdle. If for some reason we encountered a grant maker that had very specific formatting requirements, it is actually unlikely to be related to the resume and perhaps more because they are thinking about a bio sketch structure or a specific uh, curriculum vitae structure. And we could take what we have as our base resume and expand it so that everything is current at that time. But I wouldn't spend the time and effort on that now. I would suggest that as a team, what you focus on is ensuring that at a minimum, your resumes are current to reflect the titles, the work that you are doing in the organization right now. Then if we think one step further, who are the staff that we might hire in order to get the work done? Well, if we're thinking about our organizational chart and what we talked about a few modules ago, those individuals are going to be called out probably with a TBH, a to be hired in the organizational chart. The related attachment that would get submitted with the grant application would be a job description because we haven't hired anyone yet. So we don't know what their resume looks like, what their bio would sound like. And so we would upload a position description or a job description. The thing that you can do in advance that might help take some of the pressure off is if you know that your organization is committed to implementing this project or program that will require new staff, 
work with program leadership and human resources to get a job description drafted in advance of working on the application. So again, it takes some of the pressure off while working towards the application deadline. What would be expected at a maximum would be that the individual is in the organizational chart, they're showing up in your budget and budget justification, and that there would be a job description outlining the type of work they would do and what their qualifications would be. Now, if we're thinking about the rest of our program design elements, if we think about our logic model, this is the program design element that fits on one sheet of paper. It's got just a little bit of information about our inputs and resources, just a little bit of information about our key activities and about the outputs, the things that will count, just a little bit of information about our outcomes, our short-term, intermediate, and our long-term. If we're thinking about who is being listed, who on our staff is part of the logic model, those individuals, that's a good list to have resumes or bio sketches ready for. That would be a key place that we're looking for alignment across all of our documents and attachments. When we think about our to be hired, as I mentioned, it would be helpful if you know that there is commitment to doing this project or program that we get a job description written out so that it aligns the org chart, the job description is an attachment, the budget, the budget justification. When we think about some of the language that's going to potentially tell us what do we have to upload, how much or how little, there are grant applications, grant programs that will make distinctions about key personnel versus all direct employees that are related to the project or program. And so you'll want to read those qualifications carefully. Key personnel does carry with it the definition that these are individuals making a substantial contribution to the project or program. You'll also look for language related to perhaps principal investigator. If you are in health or in research, that's language that might also help influence which positions do we need to include resumes, bio sketches, or job descriptions for. This conversation in particular highlights how important your human resource department or colleagues are as a part of your grant team. This is not only on your shoulders, this is something that you're going to definitely need their support with, and best if you ask for their engagement early on. If you have any questions about the resumes you might include or how you connect the dots to your organizational chart or your budget, or even maybe those new job descriptions, be sure to reach out. You can reach out to me after the module at diane at dhleonardconsulting.com.